Hello and welcome to the Atheist Hour with Michael Fulford. It's not the half hour, so we don't have the extra H, so it's more of an I ah instead of an I. Ah. But still, welcome to the show. Uh, one thing I want to touch on real quick is the Pope recently made a statement that made some people think that, hey, he's being welcoming the atheists. He's saying atheists can go to heaven just like dogs. Um, well, if you actually look in at it, he's not really saying anything new. He's just saying that uh, it's, a and there is some mistranslation from what he originally said, uh, really, no, atheists still don't go to heaven, which is really sad because we were really looking forward to the whole afterlife thing, except we don't believe in it to begin with, so... Oh well. Uh, aside from that, what I was going to kind of bring up today is something that a uh, an astronomer that I really like, a fellow named Carl Sagan, who was a uh, very famous science popularizer up to the eight up to the nineties. Uh, he passed away in ninety eight. Uh, something he wrote about in his book, The Pale Blue Dot, was about the great demotions of man. Now. What this is referring to is something that's coming about as we gain knowledge, as we uh, learn through the scientific method and through philosophy and other tools as well, that we are really not as important as we like to think we are. You know, what do I mean by that? I, I don't mean that we're not unique, we're not something special, uh, but we tend to have a very big opinion of ourselves when we look out into the world. Uh, if we look at religion, one of the greatest teachings, is, in Western religion at least, is that God made the world for us. The entire point of existence is for us. The moon, the sun, the stars in the sky were all meant for us. And, well, as we begin to study the world, we find out that's not true. Uh, we, there are other worlds there are, that we found we, recently. Uh, we've only recently begin to, begun to be able to detect them, but other worlds outside of our solar system. We can see into deep space now and actually detect planets that are not much larger than our own planet. They're out there, and there's, and there's a good chance that one of those planets will have life on them, and probably more than one of those planets. And we're trying to develop the tools now to be able to, do, to detect them. But there was a point in time where we thought that this was all there was. There was one Earth... And, you know, whatever it might be, whether it was flat, whether it was round, you know, despite what some schools still uh, will teach their kids, we knew the world was round at least as far back as 300 B.C., probably earlier, but, you know, it's hard to tell. If it's not written down, we, might, we wouldn't be able to know about it. Uh, but there was a time when everybody believed the world was flat, and and at some point we uh, we know in the Greek case it was because they... We're able to measure, measure the shadows in different parts of the world and calculate the circumference of the Earth from there. But at some point, we began to realize the Earth was round. Well, if the world is round, if it's a circle, it means it's finite. There, there's not this eternal. Uh, you couldn't just go left or right and never reach the end. Now we also there was a point where they thought that you just fall off the Earth, but that was a long time ago. So. Uh, we learned that, you know, okay, well, the world isn't as big as we thought it was. It's a little smaller. Everything's a little closer by. And as time went on from there, we began to realize, well, we still thought the earth, the sun r rotated around the earth. All The earth was at the center of everything. Well, eventually we found out that, well, no, actually the earth rotates around the sun. Okay, so we're not at the center of our solar system. Well, maybe we're at, still at the center of our galaxy. Well, no, we're not at the center of our galaxy. In fact, as it, we found out, we're actually more on the edge of it in, in the bi barred spiral galaxy. Okay, well, maybe our galaxy is all there is. And, well, Hubble and others found eventually, no, there are other galaxies, other star systems out there. And ours is just one of many. Our sun is just one of an un uncountable number of different stars. So, well, okay, maybe ours is not the only galaxy and not the only solar system, but our galaxy is still at the center, and it did kind of look like that. But then we began to understand how expansion, how all the galaxies are expanding away from each other, are just expanding. And we began to realize that, no, we're not at the center. We're So at the end of it, we're really just... 
kind of a spec where nothing in our our solar system seems to be abnormal except that we have one planet which we definitely know has life on it. Uh, nothing about our galaxy seems important. Nothing about our sun seems important. And there's not this intrinsic specialness that we're taught through religion. And instead there's this very humbling experience of finding out, well, really we're at the stage of the universe we're not really that important not intrinsically not the universe does not exist for us it's been here far longer than we've been around and it'll be here far longer after we're gone and for some people this is a hard thing to understand or a hard thing to grasp we have to have a reason we have to have a purpose and for me that's not so much a problem the idea that you have to have something there, some intrinsic purpose behind existence in order to justify and make anything worthwhile. And I just don't under personally, I, you know, that the more I've learned, the more I study, the more I begin to realize just how, uh, even on Earth, in our limited existence here, just how much time, uh, human time has passed in the sense of how many generations have gone we've gone through since we first came around and to realize just how much we have learned since then how much new discoveries how much new deve uh, developments and new uh, philosophies and creations we've come up with since then that to say that well you know none of this matters unless there's some outside purpose to it well no it, it's still wonderful it's still amazing <clears throat> but when Carl Sagan was writing about these great demotions, he was talking about things that we all have. We all think that there's something, well, we all think we're special. We all think we're unique. And you know, to a degree we are. But we don't know of any other intelligent species on the planet at least. And we are beginning to gain the ability to dis to save or destroy things to a level that we would never before have imagined or dreamed. And we're only gaining more of these abilities over time. So when he talks about these demotions, these ideas that we, where we begin to realize we're not as important as we think we are, by sheer, and it, it, he's talking about the sheer virtue of being unique uh, at, from an outside perspective of, of God making us unique. Now we know that through evolution, through development, we are unique in a sense that we are, as far as we know, we're the only sentient species on the planet. That there would be people who argue about dolphins, who argue about uh, whales, and who would argue about uh, some of the other apes on the planet. And, that, and they've got a good point there, personally speaking. But as far as we know, for surety, we're the only ones. And to me, that there is a certain responsibility there. And how now that we have this power that we're developing, we're you know nuclear arms, uh, genetically modified organisms that we're developing. Uh, the way we will develop land and manufacture housing, all these things that we do that uh, will change the environment to our benefit. That is something we've developed. That is something you know to a degree we should be proud of. We are able to do these things. We're able to make areas that were once in a, inhabitable to us, habitable. Now, that's great, and that's an amazing ability, but do we have, have we learned to be responsible when doing so? And I, and I don't think we have. Now, with the tools that we're learning now, when, as we're able to see back into time, as we're able to see forward into time with our ability to observe the cosmos and then to make predictions with these observations, we begin to, to on our own level, try to make those applications or try to apply this observational tool and the science to what we do with other people and how we interact and how we develop new tools. And we begin to figure out that we have certain ways that we do, deal with each other that are good. Uh, we've learned that government, when it's, pro when it's properly handled, is a useful thing. We learned that um, medication can be used 
prop when used properly gives us beneficial health all these things that we learn over time that we did not know before that we're working on that we develop that we apply and at that point then we develop something special and that is something to take pride in it is not outside and being forced upon us we're not special because we are made special we are special because we have developed these tools we have made amazing things we are not unique just because we are unique and special because we have done these things we have visited the moon we have developed medications and vaccines we have made uh, built amazing structures and those are things to be proud of those are my answers to these great demotions and some I've taken a personal hand in many have not and that's what's happened with many people they, the response to this is apparently to be depressed oh no we are no longer the center of everything or well we've never been the center of everything we just thought we were at the center of everything that's what religion had taught us that we are the center of everything that we are God's specialty we are God's chosen people and it's a view that's hard to hold up when you look out into the cosmos and see just how insignificant you really are on the grand scale. And as Richard Feynman said, if you look out into the universe, things are not in proportion. Now, when you take these religious teachings and try to overlay them onto what you see, you, know, you can't you can try to remain fundamentalist you, you can uh, but you have to close yourself off to new ideas you have to close your eyes you have to close your ears you have to not go out and seek new information and to do so I think is something that shows uh, one damage of religion it causes you to close off one of the parts that I think makes us human it's our curiosity it's our drive for discovery it's our reasons for being is to go out and explore to learn to grow and fundamentalism just defeats that it, it and really it's fundamentalism in, in anything whether it's religion or politics or whatever philosophy or ideal you hold if you are fundamentalist in your approach you lock yourself out of new things that's not to say that there's something that you should never do because there are some things we should try to keep ourselves from doing, but there is a point where you have to discover what they are in order to know not to do them. So when you see these new discoveries coming out, when you find out, well, our psychology is such because of this reason, whether it's evolutionary, whether it's genetic, whether it's biological in some other way, uh, or it's culturally enforced, you know, that's something that people have a problem with. You know, they don't want to, we don't want to think. We want to think of free will. We have free will. We, you know, it's our choices that define us. Well, we realize that, no, it's our culture. It's our biology that defines us. And that's another demotion because we begin to find out that we are not ourselves self-created, which is what we like to think. Uh, we like to think that we are responsible for our own actions, our own triumphs, and our own failures. But we begin to find out that, well, that's not really the case. Uh, there's, uh, like in that song by Bob Dylan, you know, when you say that you're a self-made man, your family slaps you on the back and say, please. We are all a development of the culture we find ourselves in, and a development of the people we know. And we find out over time that, well, really our challenges that we face are only able to be taken on because we know more people we because we are the people who've helped us because of the things we've experienced and those things can be the people you know the uh, television you watch the comics you read the books you read the stories you get involved in and those all will inspire you and those all bring you uh, those all affect your personality now, when it comes to free, to the idea of free will, as we begin to learn that, well, really, the idea that we've had about free will, that we are uh, who we are, depend, you know, apart from the situations we find ourselves in, as we begin to understand that that's false, that's something that people have trouble with. 
because otherwise you then we're just many people take the view that well otherwise we're just machines we are no longer responsible for our actions or our actions are outwardly imposed which to be fair is kind of the christian view of god that uh, you know he knew you before you were born and he set in motion he has a plan for you and he gives meaning to your life that's not that different uh, when you take it down to the basics but there are people that still have a trouble with this and it's understandable but to me what that means is as we begin to understand this then we can really take action on ourselves if you do not understand that your own beliefs and opinions and ideas are not necessarily yours but simply the culture you were raised in you begin to understand that you can change your own beliefs you now that you understand why you believe something why you act a certain way you can take steps to change that if you don't know you don't know how to change you don't know that you can be different that you don't know that if you don't know why what causes you to do a thing you don't know how to change that thing and you don't grow and you don't evolve you don't become better unless you take unless you do have this knowledge now as time has moved on we begin to gather more information like this we begin to understand how we are part of this world how we affect the world how the world affects us which is different from what religion teaches us religion teaches us that we are above the world that we are above all things and but science teaches us something else science teaches us that we are part of all things that we came from nature that we developed from the cosmos and that what makes us up the atoms the molecules and such will eventually go back into nature and if you are one who is sympathetic towards reincarnation those atoms that make us up will one day make up other things as well whether it's trees plants um, atoms it will eventually go into other things other beings as well and to understand that to me is it, it's amazing is it to a degree it's beautiful because you begin to understand that nothing is lost in a sense now knowledge can be lost but nothing that makes us up is lost we're what we are in physical sense in the physical sense is always going to be around the atoms in our bodies the molecules the water we drink the food we eat we'll all recycle we'll all go back to nature and we'll well all those atoms will reform into some other shape and we are now reaching a time to where even information will not be lost I regularly watch video and listen to audio of people who are long dead and yet I still get to listen to them I still get to hear what they had to say and how they meant they wanted it to be said so we are finding so even that is no longer being lost and event and you know uh thanks to the nsa even more information is going to be kept and maintained <laughs> so as we go forwards the more things we have to touch the more things we have the information we have the more tools we have the more things we learn and as we learn more things there's a good chance that we will again reach this point where we will no longer have something that we take pride in uh, this pride that comes about only because we think we're special not because we are special in the sense that we think but just because and the problem I have with that is well it's a lot of when you think about it it's the same way that you hear racists say well I'm better because I'm white or I'm better because of whatever reason you want to pick I'm better because I'm a man instead of a woman and well really that how pathetic is that I mean really how pathetic is it I am better because of something I had no control over I had no option over this I didn't choose this I just am better because of this there is a part in the Old Testament I believe where you are bidden to thank God for making you a man instead of a woman even though of course you had no choice in the matter and you had no option you, it wasn't like you said mm, I'm gonna pick guy I know nobody asked me I mean I'm happy who, with who I am but you know would have been nice to give an option I guess 
So as time goes on, you know, one of the things we will have is we will see more people being able to choose the gender, or the role they want to take. Uh, that we will see more people being given the option of what they want to be in life as they get as they begin to understand the roles that they have. There was a point where we didn't have that opportunity, it was, and not long ago, if you were a man, you had a certain role. If you had a woman, you had a certain role. Now, men had, uh, as we know, men had a certain more flexibility in the roles they got to choose, and lately now, women have gained that flexibility. Uh, and are still, well, they're gaining that flexibility. It's still a work in progress. But we're removing that border of being special just because of your gender, just because of your color, of your skin, or of any, you know, just because of. You know, I'm better because I have cowboy boots. You know, it's ridiculous. It's pathetic. It's saying that through no fault of my own and through nef no effort of my own I am better well we're getting rid of that and we come back to these demotions we are finding that there's really no reason intrinsically to be proud of who you are without having done something to gain that pride now we gain as we have these tools as we begin to understand okay well we're not special in just because so what are what what's a good reason to be special well uh, I am special because, see, it's hard to do, isn't it? Well, I'm, I'm special because I have taken the time to educate myself. I've, I've gone through and gained an education of, in a way that some people my own age may not have. I am special because I try to, to give, when I have an opinion, I try to inform myself on this or gain as informed an opinion as I can get when I interact with people I try to be as polite and friendly as can be and these are all things that you know that things that I've learned over time to be and those are things I take pride in because I've learned and tried to apply them now are we always going to do this are we always going to be able to maintain the idea that we're not special no uh, we see that in the states today. Well, America is the best country ever. Why is it the best country ever? Because it's America. Okay. Do we have any reason necessarily for believing so? Well, we hear about rights. and Our rights are, uh, in comparison to other countries, our rights are better in some ways, and in other ways they're worse. Uh, our education is not on par with other countries of our economic status and uh, well, our economy is having problems, other things as well. So what makes America great? That's a real question. I mean, if you are proud of the country you live in, what makes it, what makes it something to be proud of? What are you proud of it for? And why do you believe that? Is it because that's something you were told? Is it something because when you watch the news, you are told that we have this, our country is great and powerful and wonderful? Or, and maybe you hear, until X party got in charge. You know, whichever one you don't like, pick one. Or is it because you have some specific reason? What is America? Now, and the thing too is, is it, okay, well, you talk about this reason, whatever it might be. America is great because we produce the best comic books. Okay, well, have you actually checked other countries to see if they produce co what their comic books are like? I mean, speaking of someone who is a comic book fan, which is why I use the example, uh, Europe never had the Comics Code Authority, which uh, really debilitated the uh, comic books here in the U.S. And neither did Japan, and they have some amazing comics when it comes to manga. Well, maybe it's our economic policies. Well, uh, you can. That takes a little more education on your own part to figure out if that's true or not. Well, is it our writers? Well, personally, I enjoy writing uh, authors out of Britain more often than I enjoy American writers. Is our po is it the honesty of our politicians? No. 
So really, when you get down to it, what it why is America the best country ever? It's the kind of, well, it's because it's the country you were born into. If you ask somebody in Britain, they will probably say the same thing. If you ask somebody in Europe, in any part of Europe, they probably say something similar. If you say that in Russia, it's going to be Russia, right? So what counters that? Well, if you get an education or if you teach yourself, you begin to learn, well, America is a good country in these respects, and in other respects, here's where it fails. Our medical system is not as good as, as other countries. It's less efficient and has more problems than others. Our, you know, the political system has its problems. This, you know, Whatever you want to say, all these different things that have problems in, and we recognize that America is not unique simply because it is America. We think it. We may think it is because it is our home country where we are born and where we were raised. But if we take the time to learn, we find out its problems, and that's a good thing. I'm not saying that because I'm down. I'm not trying to down America. I'm saying that if we learn this, we can find out where to improve and how to improve. Uh, if we learn what our problems are, until we know what they are, we can't fix them. And you can, even if you know the, what the problem is, if you don't educate yourself about the problem properly, you won't know how to properly try to fix it. And that's just, that's just how it goes. And that, so when it comes to, when you talk about the motions, when you talk about, well, this scientific worldview hurts my religion or hurts my faith or something, well, maybe it should. Maybe you need to learn why it's hurting your faith. What is it about it that causes you problems and makes it so that you can't accept what is being taught? And if you do take that to heart, if you learn why it's causing you a problem, I'm not, you can may well still be religious, but you'll understand why these were a problem and what you needed to do to fix them or to better understand them. Whether it's something as simple as realizing that the world or that the universe really is billions of years old, or it's just recognizing that. Well, I did really good in school, but a lot of that had to do with the fact that my mom pushed me in school, that uh, I was, my teachers took an extra effort on me, and that I was really pushed to succeed. And it wasn't just on my own merits. So it can be anything big or small. And th those are things we have to begin to understand. Now, as time keeps going forward, as we keep gathering information, as we keep developing new ideas and new philosophies, we'll be able to better un handle these new revelations as they come out. The idea that the universe is expanding met less resistance than the idea that the Earth went around the sun. We no longer had a, we begin to have a humbleness as we approach new ideas. That the older ideas were not necessarily wrong, but we didn't have enough information to actually judge the, come to the conclusion that we originally came to. Uh, again, going back to the idea of a flat earth. Well, it wasn't so much wrong. It matched all the understandings we had at the time and all the evidence that we had. But the conclusion that we had was based off of the poor information that we had. We got better information. We began to understand the world was round. As we get, got better information, we understood that the Earth went around the Sun. And as we again got more information, we began to understand our place in the galaxy. None of the previous conclusions were exactly wrong. They were just based off of information that was incomplete. And the, that's one thing about science. We understand that our conclusions are maybe they're not uh, entirely accurate. And they're not entirely wrong, but they are based off the information we have. More information means more accuracy when we go to make uh, descriptions of the world, when we try to understand the world around us. So when it comes to religion, however, we don't see that. We don't see the idea that there will be more, it, you know, we will have more here. We will have more ideas. We will have more understanding. Um, instead, we have this is it, okay? Uh, take the Ten Commandments. Those are those pronouncements. There's no amelioration there. There's no, except in this instance. It is always, you will never kill. Of course, God kind of breaks that himself, except when God says so. I guess, uh, you will never steal. 
except if God says it's okay, I guess. Uh, do not commit adultery unless you ha- need another wife or three, I guess. All these things that you have, they're just statements. You know, the world is 6,000 years old. Why? Because it says so in the Bible. And why is there sin in the world? Well, because Adam and Eve, Eve ate the fruit and then gave it to Adam, and therefore they broke the covenant of God and were kicked out of Eden. Well, okay, well, no, we begin to understand. Well, you know, the the human population is such that we understand. Well, no, we were around further back than 6,000 years ago, and there were more people then than just the two individuals. We do have mitochondrial Adam and mitochondrial Eve, um, but these people live thousands of years apart from each other and probably on different parts of the continent. Uh, we begin to understand, well, you know, human behavior is such that it is because we are primates that evolved to be in a social setting and uh, sometimes we, the culture is not is such that it's not very well handled and uh, we have individuals with a wide variety of behavior and sometimes that behavior is harmful and as we begin more to gain more intelligence and as uh, the social structure that we've developed and the culture we've developed takes more of a hold certain things that are uh, perhaps harmful uh, are spread and become uh, well religion or dogma and are preached and are re- continued when maybe they shouldn't be and it's only through the adding on of information as we begin to realize that well people are people there's no real difference what whatever the color of their skin or whatever their religious upbringing or background that we begin to understand well really there's no difference here there's no reason that we should have these uh, separations these institutions and it's not just in Western culture. The uh, in India, they still have the caste system. Uh, the idea that there are untouchables, that there are lower thans, uh, which is still something that is slowly being removed from society. And that the idea that peop- that there are people who are less than just by nature of their birth, instead of really what when you take a when you begin to understand, you realize that, well, people are not uh, in the situation. They are entirely due to their own faults. That's not to remove personal responsibility. There are things, we are still responsible for the way we handle situations we find ourselves in. Uh, but even that personal responsibility must be tempered with the, uh, the knowledge that the way our brains work, that the way we were raised, the uh, experiences we had growing up, all these things affect the person we are and how we deal with situations. And that's something we need to understand. That's something that maybe it makes you less secure in who you are and how you've come to be, but then you but with that knowledge you can then go out and say, I know why I do this. Is this a behavior I wish to continue? And at that point you be are able to adapt yourself to change yourself to better yourself to better realize the person you want to be if you don't know that the reason why you behave a certain way is due to say uh, misbalance of chemicals in your mind well you won't if that's not a behavior that is beneficial you begin you don't know if you don't know what's causing that behavior whether it, it could be alcoholism it could be being bipolar or depressive or whatever else that we know cause problems then you just suffer with that and whatever actions you take will be te- will be affected by this if you can have a medication or a treatment of some kind that will restore or will balance out your brain chemistry make you a fully functional person now maybe this changes the way you do things it changes your view of yourself maybe it changes your view of the world and yeah that's a scary thought but at the same time, now that you, you took the action to improve yourself, to make sure that you were able to do the things you need to do to be able to be a better person, and at that point you're able to actually do the things that you want to do. And you can judge for yourself, am I better this way? Do I feel better this way? Do I think better this way? And if that's the case, then you can continue taking the treatment. If 
you decide that no, I maybe the other the way I was was not more uh, functioning than this, but I am I was me, and you can just stop taking the medication. I wouldn't recommend it, but there you go. And with all these things that we begin to learn, uh, the idea that you know the the world was not created for us, the universe was not created for us, the world we inhabit that we've created is totally separate from the world that actually exists. You know, the we begin. We it should bring a sense of humility, a se- an idea that you know we are here not because of any special any outside influence on our but through our own efforts is that the idea that we can take pride in the fact that we have developed this whatever this may be but also with the idea that by the time we got here so much more had happened but the you know you had the dinosaurs you had the early life on earth for billions of years before we even got to this point and then only recently, within the past two million years, we've come around. And then from there, only within the last few thousand years, we've developed as a society. Almost as an afterthought. And to then say, well, God made all this for us. It reminds me of something I read concerning the... Uh, early European uh, colonization of the United States, or what would become the United States. Uh, For a long time, Europeans were not able to make headway into the continent, simply due to the number of Native Americans, uh, the Native American population here. Uh, they, They were better at guerrilla warfare, they were better at maintaining their property simply because they lived here. And they were used to the environment and such that was here, whereas the Europeans come over were not. However, uh, if you know your history, you know that disease started to spread, that uh, there, the battles, while the uh, Native Americans did have the advantage in terms of the, cult, the environment and uh, knowing the battlefield, over time the battles did take their toll, and that coupled with disease led to decimation of the tribes here in the states, here in the continental states. And you can read as you come of the colonizers as they went through and finding uh, with remarkable and cognitive dissonance perhaps you can read as they talk about how they would come across these just wonderfully prepared lands obviously meant by God for these God fearing colonizers to take advantage of wonderful fields that just needed a plow all these other things well it's because that the Native Americans had been there first and had used the land for com- for farming or for whatever work that whatever they used to land for and now they were gone and the colonizers came as on their heels so as we look at this as we begin to understand that well we are not apart from nature we are part of nature we have diff- various parts of our personality parts of our anatomy that tell us that are very much a mark of the fact that we developed and are evolved beings with flaws. That we should not just be, uh, upon learning this, we should not become you know, depressed. Oh no, we are not as special as we thought we were. We should begin to understand, well, we can improve ourselves then. We know where we went, where evolution has not fulfilled uh, or has not completed the development of our species we can be better than this and we've we can do uh, medical treatments that will benefit pe- those of us who have a spine that was not uh, really developed for upright walking uh, we can treat when the chemicals in our brain are not properly balanced we can do therapy when the behaviors we have learned are not beneficial to our survival or to our partaking in society and with the tools we have now, we can read books of people who are thousands of years dead. We can listen to people who are, have died recently, and we can listen to their lectures, to their thoughts. We can read their interpretations of what they have read themselves. And we can go forward from this information and compile it and take 
and go and expand and realize how much we have accomplished. And it is those accomplishments that really are what drive us, that really should be something to take pride in. Not because of some outside, we are great because of this X reason, but because we are we are great because we have made these accomplishments. And that's one of the re- for me personally, that's one of the reasons why I dislike things like ancient, the idea of ancient aliens, which is really all about removing the accomplishments we've made, uh, saying that there had to be some external force to build our ancestors' monuments, to have taught our ancestors things that really are very simple. Uh, what my particular contention is the uh, pyramids in Egypt... Uh, which I've got to say, as much as I love Egypt, they're really stacked stone. That's all they are. Uh, there is some impressive engineering there in terms of how they level the site. and But otherwise, the actual stones, if you look, they're all random sizes. There's empty spaces inside the pyramid itself that are uh, left there during construction. There's backfill that is used to try to even out everything. Uh, they cheated a little bit by building on top of a hill. That was incorporated into the pyramid, which means you don't need as much rock. Uh, the and there, the accomplishment is really not that they were able to build this thing; that it was made uh, by stacking stones on top of each other. Uh, but that you had the organization, that you had the power, or, or you had a person who had enough power to organize a structure to be built that would take in years, probably decades, we have an idea of 20 years, to build this monument. Uh, and that, too, that the people who built it were not slaves. We found their remains. We know that these people were uh, happy to work on uh, what they, for someone they saw as a personal god. Uh, we know that they thought that they were doing something wonderful, that they thought they were building for something for their afterlife. And to me, the disappointing part is we don't know their names. We don't know enough about them to actually know anything. And that removes that accomplishment they made if you want to attribute it to something else. And, well, I think that's all I've got time for today. Uh, My name is Michael Fulford, and I'm with the New Covenant Group. And uh if you do want to try to contact me to send messages you can email me my email is michael scott fulford at gmail.com i'm on facebook under the same name and just remember always just keep learning